Hey guys, I'm back with another PvP tips video, and today we're going to be covering Cursed Cannonballs. These are extremely important when it comes to naval combat, so I'm going to go over where you can find them, what different types there are, when to use them, and maybe even some good combos you can try and pull off. So I hope this helps you out. First off, Cursed Cannonballs can be found anywhere that normal cannonballs can be, so while you're running around gathering supplies, be sure to keep an eye out. Cursed Cannonballs currently come in three different types, starting with Purple, which applies status effects to player ships, just make sure you hit your shot and it'll affect the entire boat. Green, which applies status effects to players and is an area of effect, meaning you have to hit near where the players are standing for it to work. Thirdly, the Flameheart Curse Cannonballs, which you can only get by completing the Flameheart World Event. So looking at the purple Curse Cannonballs, let's start with the Anchor Ball. And not many people know this, but this one's actually a toggle. So if you hit this on an enemy ship, it'll lower their anchor, but if their anchor's already lowered, it'll raise their anchor. This is great for ships that are trying to run from you. You can immobilize them and then chain shot all their mass down. And you can use it defensively too. If someone's chasing you, you can use this to buy yourself some time. Up next is the rigging ball. If you hit an enemy ship with this, it'll raise up all of their sails and make the players unable to interact with any of the mass for a short period of time. Again, this is great for immobilizing enemy ships that are trying to run or even using defensively, but the best use for the rigging ball is using it immediately after knocking down an enemy's mass with chain shot. That way they can't catch it on the way down, which is a huge inconvenience for them. The Peace Ball. Hitting an enemy ship with this will aim their cannons all the way up, making them temporarily unable to fire back at you. And obviously the best time to use this is when you're in a compromising position and an enemy ship has an angle on you, not only on your ship, but also if you're in a stationary cannon, like in a fort tower, this can be a great way to defend yourself. The Barrel Ball. This is one of the more weaker cursed cannonballs. If you hit an enemy ship with this, it'll make the players unable to access their supply barrels for a short amount of time, but they still have all of the supplies that are in their pockets. So really, the only good time to use this is when you're putting major damage on an enemy ship and it might give you a slight advantage. The Ballast Ball. This is one of the most powerful curse balls in the entire game, but it should only be used against galleons. Hitting a ship with this will make it ride lower in the water, meaning their mid deck will start to fill up. And the Brig doesn't really have that much of a mid deck and the Sloot mid deck is so insignificant, it's not really worth it. So you should really just save these for galleons and make sure you time it right because you want to wait until the enemy ship has a bunch of holes in their mid deck because a ballast ball can end a fight very quickly and is the reason if you're on a galleon you need to keep your mid deck holes repaired congratulations you've made it to the worst cursed cannonball the helm ball hitting an enemy ship with this will lock their wheel in place meaning they can't turn and as much as i would like to say this is great for making people run into islands or kegs in the water whatever, it's so situational that I often forget it exists. In fact, I forgot to record footage for this, but it's garbage, so who cares? Moving on to the green player curse cannonballs, let's start with the two stun balls, the weary and jig ball. Both of these will force enemy players to do an emote, meaning they can't move or interact with anything for a short period of time. These are great to use like a rigging ball after you've chain shotted an enemy mass, that way they can't catch it as it's falling down. And it's also good to use like a peace ball because if you're in a compromising position, put them to sleep or make them dance and you won't get shot. Also, very, very good to use after using a ballast ball because once that galleon starts filling up with water, you put them right to sleep and they will be unable to bucket any of it. The limp ball. People think this is one of the more useless cursed cannonballs, but it is actually very powerful when used against a galleon. What it does is it'll break a player's legs, making them move slowly and unable to sprint. And when a Galleon is taking a lot of damage, or when you've just used a Ballast Ball, players will have to bucket out water from the bottom deck, run up two flights of stairs to then throw it overboard. And if they can't run, this means they can't bucket as fast, giving you a major advantage. The Grog Ball. This is a fun one. Hitting a player with this will make them drunk, but more importantly, it makes it very difficult for them to control their characters. This affects every aspect of ship management. It makes it more difficult to helm. It makes it more difficult to aim cannons and to repair. Also, they'll start vomiting on each other, which makes it hard for them to see. So the best time to use this is just when you're in the middle of a very heated battle. Lastly, we have the Venom Ball. Hitting players with this will poison them, similar to when you get bit by a snake in the game, doing slight damage over time and making it kind of hard to see. This ball isn't especially useful, but it can do major damage to the crew if used in conjunction with fire bombs. That way they will not only be taking damage from fire, but also from the poison as well. Now let's get into the Flameheart Cannonballs. And these are kind of weird because there seems to be confusion on the exact stats of these. So I had to do some tests, but we'll just start with the base 
Phantom Cannonball, which as far as I can tell is just a reskin of the normal Cannonball. It doesn't do any extra damage or anything like that, but it does give you some more ammo in your pockets. After that is the Flame Phantom Cannonball, which as you might guess, is just a reskin of the normal Firebomb. It doesn't look like it puts any more fire on your ship than just a normal Firebomb. So again, this is just extra ammo in your pockets. And finally, the saving grace of the Flameheart Cannonballs is the Wraith Ball. This is the single most powerful curse ball in the entire game and is essentially just like shooting a powder keg at another ship. It does major damage to the boat. It does splash damage to the players on board and has a huge knockback effect on the ship itself. These are very rare and you don't get many of them. So you have to make sure every shot counts. And in my opinion, the best time to use these is when you're close enough that you're sure you will not miss your shot. And ideally you are putting heavy damage on the enemy ship and trying to finish them off. Okay, that's it for me today. I give away exclusive in-game items every Wednesday and occasionally have Twitch drops on my stream at twitch.tv slash blurbs, where I stream every weekday afternoon and most weekends. We also have an amazing Discord community of very chill people who play Sea of Thieves together and we just talk about games and have fun. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But regardless, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.